Okay, let's talk about the asset test. And if you're watching this video, I assume that you're going to be taking this exam um, or otherwise just uh, generally interested in it. Uh, the basic uh, essence of the asset test, it's a uh, placement um, or diagnostics uh, test. It's designed to, you know, basically look at your strengths and weaknesses in particular areas. Of course, I'm going to be talking about mathematics here. And then, you know, colleges and schools use your uh, scores to place you. So you want to do as well as you can. If you got strong math skills, then you definitely want to, um, you know, study up because it, it's really a waste of time and money for you to get placed in an incorrect course. Okay. And, you know, as you well know, college and school is expensive. So if you can test into a higher level, then you should do so, especially if you, you know, are willing to work hard. And that's what it really comes down to. If you're willing to work hard, study hard, then you can really do yourself um, a favor instead of just going to a class and, you know, kind of just going through the motions. Now, of course, if you, um, you know, try as hard as you can, you studied well, then you place wherever you end up placing, then, then okay, that's fine. But um, I think many, many students don't really put the amount of effort uh, into these tests as they should. So what we're going to be talking about here is a particular problem. I'll give you a good little uh, kind of like a pop quiz to kind of see where your math skills are at uh, in terms of the ASSET exam. Now a little bit about me. I'm a math teacher if you haven't figured that out. I teach middle school, high school, even uh, taught some college as well. So I have a degree in math, master's degree, etc. But listen, really what makes me a good math teacher, I like to think an exceptional math teacher, is years of actually teaching math. And so teaching's a skill and what I focus on is really teaching things in a clear and understandable manner. So if you like my teaching style and you're interested uh, in um, uh, preparing for the asset in a really comprehensive way, I actually have a full complete asset um, test math uh, prep course. I'll leave the link in the description of this video. You can check that out or really, really help you prepare for the asset exam, the mathematics portion of it. So let's take a look at this practice problem. Let me explain it to you and then we'll work through it. It might take us a little bit of time, hopefully not that long, but here's the deal. Okay, so what you're looking at is a graph of a polynomial. Okay, this is important. So we got a polynomial. Here's the graph. This is the complete graph of the polynomial. And you can see the x-intercepts here. All right. So what I want you to do is to determine what f of negative 2 is equal to on this particular function f. Okay. So how would you do that? So, you know, probably a lot of you are out there saying, oh, I'm kind of lost. But maybe some of you are kind of, okay, this looks kind of familiar. I would suggest pause the video, think about it for a second until um, you see me go through it. Obviously, I'm going to uh, solve it here in a second. But you should think about it and see what you know or don't uh, know. Okay, so let's get into this here. So we have a polynomial. I said this is, it, it's, this is the complete graph of this function, this polynomial f. So the x-intercepts here represent the um, roots, okay? These are the solutions to this. So in other words, we have a solution at negative three and we have a solution at five, okay? However, you can see how this, gra this graph bounces off the x-axis at five. So this is really a double solution, okay? So we can write linear factors here. So x plus three, times x minus 5, you'll see what I'm doing here in a second, times x minus 5 is all equal to 0. So if I said to solve this equation, okay, x plus 3 times x minus 5 times x minus 5, you could set each one of these factors equal to 0. So I can go x plus 3 is equal to 0 and x minus 5 is equal to 0 and solve. So here I get x equals negative 3, and here I get x equals 5, and then obviously there's two of these. Let's just write this other one out. x equal, x minus 5 equals 0, so x equals 5. So I have a root here, a root there, and a root here, a solution, three solutions, right? So 2 at 5, 
So when you see a polynomial bounce off the x-axis at that location, that's a double root. And then the x-intercept, if the graph of a polynomial crosses through the x-axis, that's a real root. Okay, so you can see here that this is the real root and it's located at negative 3. So these guys are the linear factors of this particular polynomial. So in other words, if I basically multiplied all these together, I would get that function f of x. Okay. Now, we could do that. I can get this cubic function and then go ahead and find f of uh, negative 2. However, how else can I find f of negative 2 without doing all that multiplication? So this is where you got to have your thinking cap on when you're approaching these problems, right? So I can go, oh, let me just start multiplying x minus 5 times x minus 5, and I start doing the FOIL method, x squared minus 5x minus 5x. Here, I'm kind of writing kind of sloppy, right? Because this would be an illustration of you pressed for time. I'm not going to finish this problem, but I could do the FOIL method and get this and then multiply by uh, x plus 3. However, a lot of these problems, you know, are designed to test, hey, do I need to do that? This is just the factored form of this function. So can I just find f of negative 2 right here? Well, yes, you should. You sure could, right? So f of negative 2, all I got to do is just replace the x where the negative 2 is at. So let's carefully do that. I'm going to use brackets, right? So bracket negative 2. Everywhere I see an x, I'm going to re replace a negative 2 plus 3. You see why I'm using the, the brackets? I can just basically use two different type of grouping symbols. And now this is going to be times a negative 2 minus 5. And that's going to be multiplied by another negative 2 minus 5. All right, so let's go ahead and just calculate this out. So negative 2 plus 3 is just 1, correct? So this is just 1. And now this is going to be what? Negative 2 minus 5 or plus a negative 5. That's going to be negative 7. Write that a little bit nicer. Negative 7. And that's going to be multiplied by, again, another negative 7. Okay, so here, f of negative 2, let's go ahead and continue on, is 1 times negative 7 times negative 7. Negative 7 times negative 7. Hopefully you'll see that's positive 49 times 1, so it's going to be 49. So that would be our answer. Okay, So really this graph here, let's look at negative 2, like right here. I mean, just bec I don't give you any information on where the, the y-intercept is, so you can't be fooled by the graph. Okay, But here, obviously, we have a positive value, so a negative 2, this is way up here at 49. That's another thing about a lot of these uh, uh, tests. You'll see the graph and the graph you know is not in scale and sometimes they'll do that purposely because they're kind of uh, uh, throwing you off if you will. But this is basically um, how you would approach this answer. So what skills and knowledge did you need to know? Well you need to know about polynomials and the relationships between uh, solutions, roots, zeros, and polynomials, linear factorization, functions, etc. Lots to know. Now you're going to, you know, likely have to learn this one way or another, right? So if you're going into here, you're taking this asset test. Okay. Now most co college majors or programs um, are going to require at least say college algebra kind of level math. Many, many degrees are going to require much more than that. So you can jump ahead and skip a lot of kind of introductory kind of math level courses and you know save yourself money and time I mean, that's huge I mean especially when you become like an older person like me <laughs> I won't give you my age but it you know been uh, around for a long long time but uh, at the time of this video actually I'm um, 50 going on 51 so you know as your life progresses you don't see it when you're young you know, I'm, I'm assuming that you're a young kind of college bound student time becomes more valuable so just time in general is valuable even when you're young okay you just don't appreciate it as much until you're older so what I'm saying is this 
if you place into the a wrong class, you're like, ah, you know, I just whatever, you know, I just kind of go into this class because, ah, I don't I don't feel like studying for the asset test. You're going to be spending money and precious time of your life. So the deal is work hard on all all your you know um, uh, subject areas because if you have an opportunity to place at a higher level, you should absolutely do so. So, anyways, um. If you like my teaching style, I can uh, tell you right now, I have a very comprehensive um, asset uh, math test prep course. I'll, again, I'll leave the link in the description of this video. I literally have hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel. I'm posting all the time. That can also help you out with the asset. If you like this video, I would definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And leave me some feedback. Let me know how you know your college experience is going in terms of, you know, um, testing it to particular classes maybe you have some additional questions I get a lot of comments I try to read as many as I can but it's the only way I know how I'm doing and and your questions um, and uh, comments also give me ideas for future videos but with that being said I definitely wish you all the best on the the asset test um, it's worthwhile to study for okay your education is important I mean you're you're doing it because you want to you know continue your education so you should start like now. Take it serious. Everything counts. But I uh, appreciate your time and have a great day.